In the period between the two world wars, General Motors and its people went about the business of putting America on wheels and building a transportation system that would serve a democratic nation. General Motors and the young automobile industry had played an important part in the first war effort, producing ambulances, trucks, command cars, liberty engines for aircraft, artillery motors for tractors, field kitchen trailers, mortar shells, and munitions parts, harbingers of a kind of warfare that was destined to change the shape of all wars to come. By the mid-30s, American industry, including General Motors, was recovering from the Great Depression. Production of automobiles was on the rise. Meanwhile, Adolf Hitler was developing a highly mobilized military force and began rolling relentlessly across Europe, engulfing Poland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. On June 14, 1940, when the Germans entered Paris, it was time for military preparedness at home again. But first, turn back the clock. An essential part of this story actually began 61 years earlier in Denmark. He was born Signius Wilhelm Pohl Knudsen in Copenhagen on March 25, 1879. While growing up, he learned the value of an education and the dignity of work, hustling off to school in the morning and for two krones per week, pushing a glazer's cart in the afternoon. He completed seven years in public schools, two years government training, and two years of technical training school where he learned to craft things with his hands. With an aptitude for the mechanical, America beckoned, he set sail for New York. He soon found a job at Seabury Shipyards in Morris Heights, New York, where the eager young Dane's name was listed as William Knudsen. It soon became Bill. He earned 17 and a half cents an hour. By 1906, Bill Knudsen had worked his way to general superintendent of the Kime Bicycle Plant in Buffalo, where he supervised over 1,500 employees, and he gained the attention of one Henry Ford. Ford bought the bicycle company in 1912, mainly to lock Knudsen into the Ford organization. While at Ford, Bill Knudsen supervised the construction of 14 new assembly plants across the country and became production manager of Ford Motor Company in 1917. Later, disenchanted with company politics, Knudsen left Ford and, after a short time, joined General Motors, where he spent the rest of his automotive career, a career that continued its upward path. By 1923, Knudsen became president and general manager of Chevrolet, where he set the tone for his GM career. In 1933, Knudsen was appointed an executive vice president and became a member of the executive committee. And on May 3rd, 1937, he was elected president of General Motors, succeeding Alfred P. Sloan, who became chairman of the board. In short, this man who had arrived in America as a raw, eager young Dane had developed into a sophisticated, important leader of industry. Through it all, he remained humble, attributing his success to being in the right place at the right time. With the storm clouds of World War again rolling over Europe, U.S. involvement was inevitable. In May 1940, Bill Knudsen received a call from President Franklin Roosevelt. We need you down here, said FDR. Knudsen left his job, one of the highest paying in the country, to work for the United States government for a dollar a year. It was the least I could do, he said, for the opportunities that had come his way in the 41 years since arriving in this country. As head of the newly created Office of Production Management, Knudsen was charged with mobilizing all American industry for war production. Along with other manufacturers, General Motors responded to one of its own. Domestic production gave way to war production. And by the time the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, U.S. production had surpassed what had taken the Germans five years to accomplish under Hitler. In January 1942, Knudsen was commissioned a lieutenant general United States Army supervising production. Proudly wearing his uniform, he flew numerous cross-country trips to plants, solving problem after problem, even traveling to the South Pacific to check on the weapons he was producing. With the war in full tilt, material was shipped to all fronts from American industry. 
the men and women of General Motors produced almost two million machine guns, one million M1 carbine rifles, 13,000 fighter planes and bombers, 38,000 tanks and armored vehicles, 20,000 aircraft engines, 25,000 amphibious vehicles, and more. And when it was all over and freedom was secured, Detroit and General Motors turned again to peacetime production and the fulfillment of the American dream. Lieutenant General Knudsen returned to a hero's welcome in Detroit and became civilian Bill Knudsen again, resigning his commission and returning to private life. Reflecting on the experience of the war years, he would later write, the war was a hard taskmaster, but it really acted as heat treatment would harden steel and left a nation confident of its ability to produce victory when it was really necessary and beat off the attacks of any concerted effort. I believe the United States is the greatest country in the world. Let anyone show me a country where progress has been greater than in the United States. There can be no finer tribute to the honor of Bill Knudsen than the modest plaque affixed to the house in which he was born in Copenhagen. It reads, William S. Knudsen, March 25th, 1879. To Denmark, a good son. To America, a good citizen. <laughs>